socialist uh, paradise of North Korea. The Iranian socialist paradise treats gays better. I don't quite understand that thinking. Can anyone explain that to me? Well, anyway, let's move on. Dot com. Move on. Dot savage. Let us see what's in the news. I like this story, but they won't say a monk accused of looting temple to feed blackjack addiction was funny. That's hilarious. I personally never met a monk I didn't like. I liked I see them in Indian buffets that I eat in. They, we eat the same food. We we cross hands over the chicken the chicken tub. Tennessee and uh, no, I don't want to read that, it's too inflammatory. US has admitted three million Muslims since nine eleven. You don't want to hear about that. Let's see what else. Oh, here, the monk job. The monk. The monk. Monk accused of looting temple of $150,000 for blackjack addiction. A blackjack addicted Buddhist monk from Louisiana was arrested at LaGuardia Airport and charged with looting his own temple of roughly $150,000 to fund weekly casino binges. Kang Lee, the top monk at the Vietnamese Buddhist Association of Lafayette, Louisiana, appeared in full religious garb Monday in Brooklyn Federal Court and will likely be sent back to his home state to face the federal rap. There is no generalization. But I, uh, I, I think it'll be fun to see him in court. And all the bleeding heart liberals saying he made a mistake, he didn't mean it, he didn't know the language, he thought he was borrowing when it says in his religion that it's not borrowing, it's actually transferring. And transferring in his religious dialect does not actually mean stealing. It means a, mat a matter of sharing, and he thought he was actually sharing it with the poor Indians in the casino. He really didn't know that he was stealing it. You, it's your cultural imperialism that would have you believe he thought he was stealing the money. He didn't even know that gambling was gambling. He thought it was a way of dis dispersing the Buddhist money to Indians. And so if you would only put down your cultural imperialism and see it from his point of view, you get the picture. Little cartoon there. Here's Hillary Clinton with another screamer. She's really groping. You got to hear this one. Again, talking about the glass ceiling. Oh, poor women again. Poor little women like Dianne Feinstein and Nancy Pelosi and Barbara Boxer. Poor little women underrepresented in America. In clip 14. Let's hear I that one. I think it means that one of the last barriers to imagination, aspiration, is gone. Not just for little girls, but little boys too. Because I think it's important that every child in our country has the feeling that he or she could grow up to be president or be you or what, she gets do whatever they wanted to. If you break that glass ceiling for she girls cut? and you have a woman in the She's White House, belching. it sends a great message here at home and around the world. Again, the glass ceiling. 1980s rhetoric suddenly rehashed. It's like she's flying a Boeing 707. In an age of the Dreamline of the 777, she's still flying a 707. And I'm sorry, the gas coming up in the middle of it wasn't very ladylike. You hear that she was the gas coming back up on her. She must have hit a barbecue there before the, uh, what does she think, she's on talk radio? Well, you can do a thing like that. Lucky for us is that we don't have to have any dignity. You're with me three hours a day for 20 years. You understand I eat during a show, so things like that happen. But if you're going to be all so Miss Dainty Ladylike, you don't belch during an interview. Ooh. I don't know. That could win her a big crowd. That could get her the uh, the Kardashian crowd. That could get her the whole uh, Kanye West crowd right there, the belching during a, a, a delivery. Um, uh, well, there's other sound. I, I think I want to take the callers. All right, 30 seconds or less. Let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation. Line three, Marie, KSFO, what's on your mind? Yes, Dr. Savage, I love your program. I'm calling from the Bay Area. There's a fine point that I think that you could appreciate tremendously, and that is when these popes, and they have through centuries, have given us encyclicals. These letters are a letter kind of fatherly-like about their opinion, but it's not the dogma of the Church. And to get dogma changed is going to take a lot. Now, unless these cardinals have turned to the kind of elk that our Supreme Court has turned to, you're going to find a struggle with them. That's why there's a lot of blowback in the Vatican right now from some of these guys. They don't like the way oh. they're going. Oh, so I really don't know the politics of the Vatican. So what you're saying is these are his opinions only, and he's getting them from far-left radicals who work for him. Correct, and, the, and it makes traction with the press. Now, I, I'm not spouting anybody's show, but I can tell you as an intelligent person that you are, if you'd like to hear better, it's best to hear from our theologians who speak on religious radio stations because they're warning us all the time that the 
rhetoric of the media. They take one thing they say, he says, and they run the other way. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait a minute. No, no. I know what the Pope says because I read it identical. I, I read it from what he says. I'm not getting it from anywhere else. The man is espousing Marxist doctrine. It, sounds, it does sound that way. I'm not defending him. What do you mean it does sound that way? Let me read it to you because you, you don't know what I know. I have to find it for you now. You're making me go backwards, but I'll do it. I have to go do it. I'll do it. I'll risk the whole show to find it. He gave an interview just yesterday in Portugal where he, he espoused absolute naked Marxism. Here, Pope blames refugee crisis on the god of money and a socioeconomic system that is bad and unjust. That's what he said. That's not a misinterpretation. It was an interview with a Portugal-based radio renaissance. And the Pope declared that the current crisis in Europe is being caused by a, quote, bad, unjust socioeconomic system that worships the god of money. Now, if that's not classic Marxism, what is? Again, that's his opinion. That is not the opinion of the church. Well, of course, but that's what I'm, but that's what I'm trying to uh, refute. First of all, it's a lie. Secondly, it's hypocritical. Thirdly, it stirs up a, a rate class warfare. Fourthly, it stirs up hatred for those of us who work all the time to create the wealth that these people are rushing to get. What are they running into my, my evil country for? What, to starve here? They're rushing in to take what I earn. Look, at, as, as a staunch Catholic, I am not arguing with you because you defend my religion many, many times. Well, but I'm glad you know that, but I wish the Catholic League knew that. I, mean, I wish the Catholic League stood apart from the Pope on his, on, his, on his communism. Listen, my friend, I appreciate it. Stay in the line. Give us your number. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero because I have a whole chapter. It's actually one of the major chapters called Lenin's Pope. 8,000 words with references on who he is, where he came from, what he's saying, and where he's, where he's trying to take the world. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Here's an intriguing story. Chelsea Clinton is surprised that voters hate her mother. She describes her mother as a hero, and they, she doesn't know why people hate her mother. Well, she's a real genius, that daughter of theirs. Remember, she got a job at a, a news organization for 400000 a year, lasted about four minutes. She said she's a bit shocked at the reception her mother's getting from voters. On today's show on a national Bolshevik uh, network, spoke of the presidential hopeful mother's disfavor with the voters, and she can't figure it out. And she doesn't know why people ascribe the words dishonest, untrustworthy, and liar. It's always surprising to me, said the smart daughter, because my mom is my hero and one of the people that I admire and love most in the world. I mean, what is the point of this? What is the point of running your daughter out there? Like, does anyone believe the daughter any more than the mother? You know, the apple doesn't fall, etc. You know, there's a poll I don't believe. Carson and Ty with Trump. You really want to hear about these polls? Carson and virtual tie with Trump. So who does the poll? The New York Times, very reliable with CBS News. I mean, they're really reliable. They're, they're so reliable that you got to believe it. That Carson and Trump are tied. Yeah, right. No way in the world. Carson can't win. I was a Carson supporter, and I think he'd be a very good, oh, I don't know, secretary of this or that. He cannot run a country. The man has never run a business. Impossible. Look what we have with a, um, I would call him an intellectual Obama, just for the sake of a, a generic term. Look what we have with a man who's never run a business, who has the skids greased for him his whole life. You want it again? I mean, even though Carson is a different sort than Obama, and a good man, and a man who was a pediatric neurosurgeon, which is a lot different than a community organizer, you can't fake pediatric neurosurgery. You know, you don't get there through affirmative action. Either you can do it or you can't do it, and either you're great at it or you're not great at it. This is not a feel like women's studies or gender identity studies. It's not ethnic studies. It's pediatric neurosurgery. The man is a very competent, fine individual. That does not make for a good president. We need charisma. We need someone with the guts to out-negotiate the Russians, the Chinese, uh, the Iranians, for example. And it's not Carson. Carson's, I, I don't think, capable of it.
So this is so wrong, and the poll is wrong, of course, as well. This is The Savage Nation. The website is michaelsavage.com. The new book is Government Zero. I can hardly wait. It'll be out. I'm, I hear hard copies are coming any day now. I can't even get my hands on my own book. Would you believe it? I don't even have a copy of the first printing, which I'm going to try and get my hands on for each member of my family. Oh, they'll be on eBay. First printing available. Yeah. It's the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. I'll be right back. The uh, Savage Nation. So God deluged Los Angeles last night with uh, unexpected rainfall, knocking out the uh, warmest industry for one day. They all ran in a panic. They didn't know what to do. The drought was something they counted on, very much like the American Cancer Society counts on cancer to stay in business. It's been long said that if they found the cure for cancer, they'd be out of business, so they're actually set up never to find the cure for cancer. Interesting, isn't it, how things work? At least eight people were pulled into rain-swollen San Gabriel River on Tuesday as a storm drenched Southern California, flooding freeways, knocking out power, and sending mud down Orange County hillsides. It's so powerful, there's nothing it can do. It's similar to being caught in a rip current in the ocean, said Inspector Chris Reed of the Fire Department. River was race raging. Mud was flowing. Highways were closed. The hills were swamped with water. And the warmest are nowhere to be found. Nature corrected itself. I was in L.A. a week ago. Looked at the poor parched hillsides. Felt bad for the lizards and the birds and the snakes and the snails. And I said, boy, are they thirsty. And I kept saying, I pray for rain. Of course, it's I who brought the rain. That's what I'm saying. I, because I prayed for rain, God rained on L.A. Yeah, it was the flash rain for it because I, I prayed. That's right. Unbelievable that rain came, isn't it? God, they can't control the weather. They just can't control the weather. And they, they control the sheeple in America pretty good. So when you have a psycho, a retrovirus like this in the White House, who has gotten away with virtual murder and can control the people and control the opposition party, owns the press, he figures he can control the weather too. If only the weather are held until the Pope arrived, then that lying lout from Rome could have gotten away with his big lie. It's God reigned in order to tell a pope that everyone knows what he is. Your pope. Pope blames refugee crisis on God of money and a socioeconomic system that is bad. He is a Marxist through and through. He's a psycho Marxist. In an interview with Portugal-based Radio Renascença, aired yesterday, the false prophet Pope Francis, a former bouncer, declared that the current refugee crisis in Europe is being caused by a bad, unjust socioeconomic system that worships the god of money. Well, Mr. Francis, I have a question for you. Here's the question. If it's the god of money that caused this, why are all those refugees running to Germany and to England? Isn't it for money, Pope? They're not running away from money, are they? They're running to money, aren't they, Pope? And by the way, since we're talking about money, Mr. Pope, the Vatican is the largest holder of gold in the world. Why don't you sell some of your gold reserves and help the Syrian refugees? And by the way, Mr. Pope, you're talking about the shanty towns in big cities that are being caused by deforested, deforestation from global warming. Where does he get this crap from? This is the kind of elementary garbage that they teach in colleges today. Pope Francis said that refugees from rural areas are being deforested and driven into big cities. He said, why are shanty towns formed in big cities, says Mr. Pope. He says, it's the people who come from the country because they have been deforested. They have made a monocultivation. They have no work, and they go to big cities. And he said, the Pope is at war with itself. Piecemeal, a war against the earth, the environment, the glaciers are melting. In the Arctic, says the meteorological Pope, the polar bear goes increasingly northward to survive. And, of course, the Pope goes increasingly southward to survive because that's where the gullible live. Gullible travels, you see. He has got to go south to get the gullible. No one believes him anymore in the north. So the refugee crisis is based on the god of money. Bad, unjust socioeconomic system, says the communist Pope. How could you people not see what this is? Anyway, don't call me on it. I'm just giving you an example of how screwed up the world is. It's so screwed up, it's unbel unbelievable to me. This Pope will get along perfectly with Obama and Bernie Sanders. 
How could you Catholics not see this? If you've read your Bible, you know there's nothing in the Bible about confiscation and 